Hey, I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Cable TV Review Board. It's 106 on Monday, July 17th, 2017. And the second thing on the agenda is determining a quorum. And we do not have a quorum. But we will proceed doing with the updates and whatever we can without a quorum. But we can't make any motions or business uh, we need a motion or a recommendation for the city council but so we'll just continue with what's on the agenda and Al did you get a chance to read the minutes yeah I did there, that was on your email also yeah last week yeah all right All right, now we're already down to number five. Updates, channel 180. That'd be me. Um, yeah, uh, we're still waiting to find out uh, what equipment we'll need to purchase uh, to switch to HD. Um, kind of waiting with, with the school on that to work out the details. And they'll let us know whenever that's ready. Uh, we've been recording new shows, getting things beefed up on the channel. We've got a couple shows from the Ripley Reporter that uh, are in the can, not yet aired. Uh, we started a new music show uh, called The Cellar Sessions, featuring local musicians playing original music. We're developing that show. We've recorded one episode, got another one scheduled, and more on the way. Uh, another show we're working on that's been uh, pretty much shot but not edited is uh, a tour with the uh, CVB, 
Convention and Visitors Bureau of the uh, historic basements throughout the businesses in Little Falls here downtown. <clears throat> historic basements? Well, they sure look historic <laughs> when yeah. you get down there. Uh, it's kind of the story that they have to tell. And there's a lot of stories six feet under in this town. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember uh, having a lot of meetings in different things in basements in this town. Wow. <laughs> a lot of places. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fascinating things. So that's what's going to be coming out in these shows, working with the CVD. Uh, another thing I'm doing is developing a brand for the station by uh, creating a, a series of station IDs which are of local scenes, including aerial video, uh, different scenes around town of iconic things like the Mill, Mill Park ruins, uh, the courthouse, city hall, the river, the dam, etc. cetera. Um, each of these runs for uh, 12 seconds at the beginning of every show and at the end of every show. And the GRTV, Community Television for Little Falls, the title fades in couple seconds into it to give us a, a, a unique ID for this for this station. Also the churches, each of the churches now, I've made the same thing for them. We went out and filmed each church uh, and are doing the same things. So rather than just start abruptly with a church program, there's a somewhat of an intro, graphic intro showing the church. Uh, another thing we got going this summer is I have an intern, a uh, Little Falls High School graduate and Central Lakes College graduate, uh, Nick Kester over here. Hello, I'm Nick. He's been uh, learning how uh, the public access TV station works, how programs, uh, he's been doing some editing, and now he's creating a program for the channel on the uh, various murals that are seen all through town. Oh, good. And, uh, that's kind of my report. Keeping very busy. <laughs> it's a full-time job now. Sounds that way. Keeping Heather busy? Well, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Good. Especially with the summer, with you know, we got graphics. She does all the graphics for the character generator here, and uh, a lot of events going on. You know, with the fair coming up, uh, different uh, local things with uh, different community. Services. Good. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, summer session at school, so it's pretty quiet. Not much going on. Excuse um, me, I can't hear you. Okay, I'll try to speak up. Thank you. We don't have a lot going on at school right now with the uh, school not in session, so um, we're running a lot of. Repeats of the shows. Most uh, school board meetings are still being recorded. Uh, graduations airing quite a bit, but then just a collection of way back past events are being aired. So then, uh, as I think you know, Dave Gertz, who is our station manager, has retired. So we're still navigating the transition as to who and how that position gets filled. But we're pretty, I think we have a plan, but it's not official yet. Do you have any students that are uh, doing any filming or anything? Right now? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> not at the moment, no. Because I was saying there could be some, maybe some filming or things on what's going on in the construction phases at each of the schools and things like that. Yes, that's a little tricky because they don't want students in the building oh, okay. for safety reasons. And so, you've, you know, <clears throat> when you walk into that south entrance of the high school, yeah. right there by community services, that's where their access ends. So they wait there for driver's ed, but we're not to let them into any other parts of the building. So I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We can't let our students wander through the building at the high school in Lindbergh this summer because of the construction work happening. So. Thank you. Okay. So, so a few things are getting aired anyway. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of new material. Yeah. 
They're running 24 hours though, aren't they, with programming? Yep. Okay. It's just repeats of mm -hmm. past events. Some back to the 80s. But wow. way back. All right. Next, we got an old business. Here's uh, one item on old business that will get updated from John, and that's with the charter. What's been going on with charter? Um, yeah, we had a conference call uh, with Bob Bos and Charter and their their new representative and their attorney. Um, their new representative's name is Patrick Haggerty, uh, and he serves as the government relations op, uh, manager for uh, basically five states in the upper Midwest. Um, he is in charge of all the renewals for Minnesota. Um, he's been pretty good to work with so far just in the in the two calls. So we had a conference call last week with the attorneys and then I just had a, a call with him today to st discuss some you know the things that are going on locally, bring him up to speed on the history of our renewal and, and where we're at. <clears throat> so the our key our key issue that we've been having with the stations as far as you know talking about the franchise renewal is that we have the analog Things are converted into analog signal and sent to Wait Park from a from a digital sig signal. Everything that we record and, and do is on digital, um, and we're having to down convert that and then send it to the head end and Wait Park in an analog signal. They're working on making improvements on their end that would be able to receive our digital signal. However, we do need to have a piece of equipment that would. Um, facilitate that. Uh, they had a quote for that equip piece um, a year ago, <clears throat> and I believe Mark, you had seen one similar uh, to this. But it's just today they they learned more about what their their improvements are going to be, and it would have to be a different piece of equipment. It would be a little bit more substantial than than the one they have. However, that might be able to get us mostly HD signal quality from from us to them and then back to us. So, so we should be able to, with these improvements as they, as they go along, get very high quality signal going each direction. So I think um, that's been a, a, a nice thing to hear that there's been progress on that uh, and hopefully we can, we can get those pieces uh, figured out. So the question before was that piece of equipment is a charter, is it city? Um, we made the determination that that would be a city-owned uh, piece. Uh, we would be able to take the direct feed from the school to Great River Television and then send out the simultaneous streams from here um, over through that piece of equipment without any loss or conflict of signals, which we were experiencing before. So they indicate whether or not we'd have to provide a special decoder to get that e signal onto the recorder? That, that wasn't uh, indicated to me, so I, okay. I don't know. Um, that, that would be a, a question. So what ideally I think we would like to do is once that piece is purchased or discussion would be having um, to conference call with both uh, the schools, channel, Mark, you for the city, uh, and then the charter reps that be able to you know, make sure that it gets installed properly and is, is effective. Patrick has been much better to work with so far in terms of communicating and, and getting feedback on questions that we've had, we've asked. So currently we have, um, Charter has drafted uh, a franchise agreement based on a lot of the feedback that we've had over the past couple years um, in terms of our discussions. They still are in, it's still with, in a review phase with them but they have a due date to have it back to us and our attorneys by July 25th. So after that, we'll probably set another deadline on ours. So if, if we have any changes, we get that you know, feedback to them by a certain date so that we can keep this process moving forward. I'm not gonna state that there's any promise of timelines when, when the agreement could be executed, but um, it's so far just uh, Two short phone calls. We we've, we've got just pretty far with at least scheduling times to get stuff done than we did over the past couple of years since I've been on this. So that sounds good. 
Chris Patrick Hager, he's not going to give a ball. No, he isn't. He is, he is more familiar with, with, our, with our territories. Well, because we have a large Hagerty family from the Falls, and there was a Patrick in the family. Yeah. So. All right. So, so I think that's, that's positive news on that front. Um, and hopefully, we, uh, if we have something that we have to decide on, we may have to call a special meeting in order to, to do that. But, Otherwise, it's expect us to, to continue moving forward with that. So. Sounds good. Sounds like Bob Boss is making sure things are moving along. Uh, well, now that the yeah, now that he's got his feet underneath him, it's been about six months since Patrick's been there, and he's got forty three other emails in Minnesota alone to, to work on. So it's been a struggle to get onto his calendar to get these conversations started, but. Seems to seems to be aware, um, more aware of what's going on now. So. All right. So, Mel, do you have any questions? No, I'm glad to hear that. That's what you're doing. Good. Uh, now, number seven, new business. Do you want to make comments now without oh. having a? Yeah, we do want to comment, but without having a. But we're not going to do anything official that we ask for as far as a. Uh, cable review board hearing because we don't have our council person that represents both of us. We both happen to live in Leif's district, so we want him here. And the, there's at least one other member, no, two that aren't here. So there's yeah, we the, need one more board member to have a quorum so we can right. make a resolution to pass on to the city right. council and stuff. So. We prefer that this review board hearing that we asked for back prior to the April meeting be all six members to be here so that the whole board can hear um, our grievances. Yeah. Um, all right, now before you get started, this is not precedent for us to have, usually to have public comments. And but yeah, I've never had it before. I recognize that. That's good you but, have it. Thank you. But we are allowing you to make comments. Great. And we'll give you five minutes. Okay. So at the maximum. Okay. So you're on the board. All right, well, just, you know, you questioned, Jay, whether or not this board was to hear disputes. And I'm going to read from you the, from the policy and procedure of Great River Arts TV. It states, if disputes or disagreements occur between a potential or actual GRA TV user and the staff of GRA TV, the access user can request in writing a meeting with the cable review board. Such discussions should be scheduled within 10 days of the dispute. Now I asked for this in writing long before the April meeting and for some reason instead of that policy being followed to have our grievances aired and you guys listen to them and make your comments, in other words the discussion going both ways, it got shifted to the cable re review, uh, or the actual cable meeting of April 17th. So both of us are questioning that this policy wasn't uh, carried out correctly that's one issue. Um, and then we don't feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, Teresa, that this should have been part of this meeting. This is a special hearing that was to be called with our grievances. Which is what I thought it was going to be. Right. But um, in, in the event, what we would like to do is uh, ask for a, re a cable review board meeting within 10 days of today. Here. A hearing, that's what we want. Right. Within 10 days of today, as per your policy. Right. Now, I can't the rest of this week because I'm going to be out of town, but next week sometime we would request the entire board be present at a hearing because we have a number of serious grievances that we expect this board to listen to and resolve. Right. Uh, maybe next Tuesday, since Tuesday is a, a traditional day for your meeting. Well, I'm speaking as myself. And we meet quarterly. Those are our meeting times. And I don't know if anybody wants to start having special meetings when everything, all these little things that might come up, and then have more meetings. Okay, now this is cutting into our public comment time, so. Yeah, I, I pause for, for Jay's Okay, comments. thanks. It, it, it's important, don't you believe, that the policy that this board 
uh, that, that the GRA TV is operating under that was adopted November 12th of 2014 that the policies be adhered to? Don't you think that's important? This is the first I've heard of this 10 days. Well, haven't you read this policy? No, I haven't read that policy. Well, I, I would question why not. This board is uh, is to, you to oversee with this entire channel. The, you were never presented with a list of the policies. You've never, you've well, never seen this list? copy of the policies that Not this that GRA yeah, so must created? Have been long before I came in. Well, in any case, that's where it stands. Right. Okay. We're expecting that these policies be abided by and that a, we have a hearing sometime within the next 10 days since that's what the policy states. And as long as we're making comments, I, I want to ask a question and would expect an answer sometime before I leave here today. Who owns all the videos that were previously made by Jerry Abraham and by Chris Wise and by Mark Sloop in this studio? GRTV owns all of that content, 100%. So anything that was filmed here is your property, anything that we bring in is your property. Our property. Now, does that include city council meetings that are public data? That is owned by the city, I'm sure. Because it's, it's filmed on their equipment. Okay, because you're telling me something different than Chris Wise told me. And even when Jerry Abraham was here, he showed us the library of videos that were here and said that they were owned by the city. They were filmed here. This is a public access studio. How can you possibly own the, something that is station, created in a public studio? The station has studio? ownership of all video. But this is public studio. This is free speech we're talking about. And How can you own our free speech? I don't. Or anyone else's? I don't. The producer does. And if somebody films your programs and creates them, they are the producer. That's why I no longer do that anymore. I. You own everything when you go okay, in Okay, so you don't produce our shows. I do not. Okay, I do but not you're edit saying or produce those. You're, well, who is, okay. And you have signed the paperwork that says you are the producer but you're saying, of your shows. Okay, so then we own the, all of this that, that are being aired now on this channel? Can we Teresa talk? Teresa and I own them all? Mm -hmm. Shops of Little Falls owns theirs? No, no. It was filmed here? I was producer. So mm -hmm. in my capacity as station manager, GRTV owns those. Okay, but I don't, I don't understand the difference between when they filmed and we filmed. They sat in the studio just like we did. But he yours did yours is a free speech did. program which has different oh. parameters than an entertainment show. You, you're, you were in the room producing for us most of the time until within the last month or two when you told us you couldn't be the in the room anymore. The past six months. Right. I've stopped doing your shows. Right. But I so, start a recorder, so my question I leave, is, and I come back. Who owns all of the previously made videos I do well we do because when I was were... acting as producer at that time okay and are those accessible and allowed somehow to do a, like I said a public data request because they, they were filmed met, in public they have to be left. okay what's the answer I have no answer for you at this time can a, can a person make a public data request <coughs> for that public data that was created <coughs> in the public access studio. When, when no the station owns it, it the station manager has the, uh, has the right and the decision making process to air those or not air those. Right, but that's where, why where as, that? as producer. Where is what you're telling me about ownership? Where is that in this policy and procedure? Please point that out to me. I don't know, but that's just how it is. Do you know, Jill? If it's in there, no, I don't know. Could those are could one of the two of you find out and get back to me? Because I I really need to have an answer to that question. Well, you got an answer, but yeah, no, we can follow up. We can accept an answer. If it's question, a part of the policy, we'll, we'll follow. Station, we'll follow up. It needs okay, to be. Time answered. is up. We'll follow okay. up. Thank you for your questions. Will Bye. somebody Bye. notify Bye. us then with when the date is for our hearing? Yes. yes. The next, year, the next meeting that we're having, it's a cable board, is going to be uh, October 16th. Well, we don't, we're not talking about that meeting. We're talking about the hearing. Yeah, but who do you have the hearing with? 
You guys. You, the cable you review You are the cable, cable review board. not reading until October 16th. But well, this must, according to your policy. Yeah, it's not no, policy. No, no, no. The, that policy is Great River Television's policy. It's not the cable board. And the city has a contract that binds their rules to this city. Well, under law. what's going to happen is there's not going to be a cable board. Because everybody will just say, we're not putting up with that. Jay. You're not going to follow your You're policies your unless people. it's convenient for you, sir? Well, put your cameras off now. The meeting's over. We're still here, and we're still part of this discussion. The meeting is over. Well, we can record it. Yeah. 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 The, the meeting know. hasn't even been adjourned. Excuse me. It never, it never started. started. It never started. But you yeah, discussed all kinds of before. issues of the yeah. cable board. Wow. Don't touch my camera. That's private property. <laughs>